Okay, we're live. All right. Hey, Jeff. What is up, Arnold? This is my friend Arnold Martinez, Man, podcast is... master. Uh, this is Jeff Laplace, preacher man extraordinaire. Oh. <laughs> Coming to you from the Rio Grande Valley, and it's great having you with us today. Thank you. It's great being here again, Jeff. Every every time we're here is a pleasure. Um, yeah, so what is this today? We are doing spiritual defense. Yes, today is spiritual defense podcast day, or is it, I like to call it spiritual defense radio. So yeah, podcast radio, whatever. Yeah, you know, it, Arnold's flipping through his Bible right now. And, and he brought up before we started talking, Arnold was saying that it would be cool to give a brief synopsis mm-hmm. on how all of this got started and yeah. and while you're flipping and looking i guess i'll go into it a little bit yeah. I, i've known arnold since last december i think it was sort of tell into november yeah like, no like december going into january yeah oh yeah yeah yeah. because we met and then we broke for I christmas think I, I think <laughs> yeah i think i went to the first the first sermon that I saw you was the first weekend of the first month of January of, of the year. Yeah, January's yeah. first. Yes. No, January the f- yeah, Jan- yeah. January's the first month. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, gotcha. So uh, <laughs> through the course of time, uh, Arnold and I started having a Bible study together. Actually, he was starting to have a Bible study with our friend Carl, and then unfortunately, Carl started having some uh, health issues. And which, you know, the thing was, it's like he did the same thing with another friend of ours. I met you first, yet he snuck in and got the Bible study. He tried taking the Bible study from me, I know. Me, man. It's like, what What in the world, man? Yeah. <laughs> yeah he, he totally, I got snaked twice by a missionary. For I mean, those was, of you who don't know, apparently Jeff and Carl have a competition. No, we do not. <laughs> we, we do not have a competition. No, 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 no. Well, no. Have you told Carl this? Because I don't think he knows. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I think, you know what? He might act like he doesn't know. I think he knows. I, I do. I really think he knows. So anyway, he started having health issues. And so I was like, hey, uh, why don't we continue where y'all left off? After after all, you mm-hmm. literally live right down the street from me. So, yeah. you know, we can meet at the house. COVID was still going on. And yeah. and so it was, we started meeting at uh, my family's home. And we're just, we would have this Bible study, and it was a basics of the Bible type Bible study. And we went through that. Uh, Arnold was baptized, started his walk with the Lord. And he, after he was baptized, he, he comes to me and he says, we can still meet and talk, right? And I was like, of course, <laughs> man. I'm, I'm at your, you're my brother in Christ. I love you. I am totally at your disposal. Anytime you want to get together and chat. Uh, I am I am there for you. And so we started meeting and he would just bring up stuff from his week or things that he had read through the, through the Bible or through some other books that were given to him because you know he wanted to read through the Bible. He's never done it before. So you've actually done that completely, right? Or almost? Not completely. If you can't, <laughs> you can't, you guys can't see, but I'm not looking at Jeff in the eye right now. I'm well, you've read through the New else. Testament, yeah. uh, <laughs> what, two, three times at least, I think, but... Yeah, uh, well, one and a half, I guess. Okay, one and a half. Because I skip back and forth between books, and, and right now, I'm at least, this is, I'm already the second time or the third time through the Gospels. Okay, awesome. So, he would bring up something that he read, something that caught his eye, he wanted to ask, and so yeah. that's how these conversations would happen. He would bring a topic... And we would discuss it uh, for a period of time. And so, uh, I guess a month, month and a half ago, uh, I asked Arnold, I was like, what, what do you feel about doing a podcast? You know, trying to broadcast some of our conversations. Because what I love about Arnold uh, is the fact that he's a, someone who's brand new to the Bible, to the Lord, and, and to all this. And, you know... The funny thing is, is in ministry, you, you want to have a lot of opportunities with people who are brand new. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But yet, it doesn't happen a lot because sometimes people are intimidated to, to ask, to, to find out. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, people say it jokingly, but, you know, people honestly have the idea of if I walk into a church building, the whole place is going to fall down. 
You know, we did that that Krav Maga training with uh, the police force last week I told you mm-hmm. about. And one of the policemen hit me, and their immediate response is, oh, my goodness, I hit a preacher. I'm going to hell. I mean, so people still have these <laughs> these crazy thoughts, you know, about ministers and preachers. And, and they're just – there's an intimidation or an uncomfortableness about just going and asking your questions. Yeah. And what I love about you is that you have no problem asking your questions. Yeah. And that's so refreshing, honestly. So that's that's one of the things that, that was rattling around my old ADD brain is is mm-hmm. the fact that I have somebody who's brand new, so we can tackle a lot of topics. They're not burdened by the I should know this already stigma that some people carry about mm-hmm. themselves. And he has no problem asking anything. So so that's why we started doing this. So I don't know how big of a synopsis that was, but you know that's basically what's the genesis it's, of all this. I think it's a good because, like you know, when I'm trying to tell friends about, you know, yeah, you can come, like you can come to our worship, you can come to our Bible studies, you can, you know, come talk to Jeff, and uh, we talk about, you know, biblical things, we talk about spirituality, and I'm always getting them to like understand, like you know, come, you have questions, like why. Like, why do you think you can't ask these questions to someone, like, from the church, especially? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, like there, like you said, there's that stigma that, like, I don't know, people don't want, I don't know, people are afraid to go to that guy, or to the, well, in, in some cases, it's like the priest. Yeah. Right? And they're like, oh, no, the priest is going to get mad at me, or he's going to do something. I don't know. Like, you have that weird authority issue. Well, you know, it's it's like... As opposed to, like, a loving uh, guidance issue, like, or a feeling... I've met people uh, in the course of doing ministry, and they get this look sometimes that they can't believe that I am speaking to them, or and and I struggle with names. I'm, I'm one of those people that I can tell I can tell you anything about someone's life, but for some reason the name will escape me. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, but that I would know this or I would know that, and that I actually seem to care about them as an individual. Yeah. People are still surprised about this. Yeah. You know, and it's like, well, why why wouldn't I be? Because there's the, we, we live in a time, uh, 2021 America, and it's been like this for, for a while, but the celebrity preacher, um, the... The separation between the church stage or the pulpit, whatever you want to call it, and the rest of the church, you know, that yeah. that separation. That uh, people who, in, who are in ministry and are wise will do everything they can to break that stigma, yeah. that, that separation. Because, you know, you can tell there's people who have questions or they have concerns or they're battling issues. And for some reason or other, they will not come to you um, until everything hits the fan. And we're mm-hmm. almost yeah. having to play catch up, dealing with issues that if if they were willing to address before, uh, might not have been so bad. And, you know, again, I sympathize because, you know, I, there's been times in my life that, that you know, I've, I've been tempted to do the exact same thing. And, yeah. and so, again, it's... And again, that's why you're you're so refreshing. You have no idea how <laughs> how wonderful it, it has been to know you because you will ask your questions, you will find us out, and you don't have a poker face. So, you know, if, if something's Darn. going on in your life, <laughs> you know, everybody knows. Oh, gee, <laughs> so. thanks. Yeah. Well, you know, it's just good to know that that people are noticing. Yeah. Yeah. Cause maybe maybe it, everyone else thinks I have a good poker face. I don't know. <laughs> no, <laughs> nah, I don't know. So I won't go to Las Vegas. That's yeah, good. Good yeah, job. Okay, I yes. won't go play poker. Gotcha. No, no, do not do it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, and and that's uh, that's always what I like coming uh, every Thursday. You know, we talked about uh, how it was refreshing. It was refreshing to be able to talk to someone. Um, I mean, everyone says they understand. But it really felt like you understood and cared. And that's what was important, you know. Like, and I could ask these questions that I felt about the Bible and, um, you know, not feel not feel dumb for asking them. Right. And, and that's important. And that's what I try to tell people uh, when I'm telling them about, you know, possibly trying out 
uh, coming over to a, like uh, to worship or or to a Bible study. It's just like you know, like I know it's uh, it's one of those intimidating feelings. Like you're going into a new group, and um, um, a, a, not only a new group of people, but these this these people are a church. Right. Like you're going into a church. You're going and you're surrounding yourself with with. Uh, people who believe in 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 God and in Jesus Christ and what He did and and me, you know, I I can I can still remember walking in, feeling still kind of out of place, but yes. still feeling welcome. We were doing COVID seating in the auditorium, which you yeah. know, in the auditorium at the North Mission Church of Christ, uh, we have the movable chairs in the auditorium, and when COVID hit, we took the majority of chairs out. And, you know, try to do the social distancing as much as we could. And so every now and then there was like an individual chair for like a single person or whatever. And God bless him. When Arnold came the first time, <laughs> he sits in the very back row in an individual seat. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, you that's know, what people do. I mean, hey, you know, yeah, COVID, was, COVID was a that. wonderful time for introverts. You know, I'm just saying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, that's, I still remember that. So, you know, but that, that was awesome. And that's why this is a totally cool thing. I look forward to doing this every week. And, and my wife, Sherry, uh, as I was coming up here, she says, well, what are y'all going to talk about today? And I said, I have no idea. I always let Arnold pick because uh, it's good training for me because it's good to see if I can still think on my feet. But it also, again, it it gives it gives Arnold the opportunity to to ask the questions that he yeah. wants to ask. So again, what are we talking about today? I have no idea. Mm -hmm. Arnold, what are we talking about today? Oh, well, what can we talk about today? Segway. Segway. Um. So well, let's talk about. I'm closing the Bible. Oh, <laughs> let's talk oh. about relationships, Jeff. Okay. Um. You know, uh, this is an embarrassing topic for me. Uh, and just recently, I asked a, a, a couple of friends of ours, uh, who's a couple of the church married couple, uh, Jessica and Truett, yeah. uh, for dating advice. <laughs> okay. So su uh, Sunday after church, you know, I went to their house and they gave me like a few books on dating and not only just dating, but like dating as a Christian. Right. Uh, now that I'm, this is like a new thing in my life and yeah. like it's, it's a different perspective that I'm trying to have. And so like, yeah, you know, we talked about you know, what they learned in their books, uh, and, and they're really well-read people, and you know what, well, I love that they read together, and all that good stuff, like, like, they're, they're awesome people. Yes, they are. They're really cool people, so, like, talking to them is, like, it felt like talking to experts, like, like, <laughs> legit, like, okay, cool, <laughs> and, and, you know, and, 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 it, and it feels like that, not just with them, but, like, with you, and Sherry, and with, like, Carl, and Selena, there's people who, who are in the church, and they've been together for, like, a long time. I know, like, they're still a new, a newly married couple, but I still right. see them as pretty, pretty good. Well, they're more married than you are. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, was that harsh? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I hope not. Yeah, but like you know, I, I just like I way. admire everyone, and uh, I I admire them especially. So I'm just like, yo, guys, like I need help, and they're my age too. So that's also another factor. Uh, no offense, Jeff. <laughs> None taken. <laughs> Is a, you know, and did you know that they were like the first people who invited me to lunch when I went. Uh, to church was it that time where it was that like we the all, very first day they saw me was it like, that time that we all went together to that barbecue no, joint over? no like the when you saw me, like the very first time i went in alone uh -huh. like they snagged me and took me to lunch oh there you go yeah i was like oh cool yeah. <laughs> so uh yeah. it was uh it was really cool to you know to meet that like they've just been a great blessing in my life yes and yeah. so uh naturally uh, i i opened up to them and i was just like guys like i need help yeah <laughs> Uh, so they gave me some uh, pretty good reads that I'm reading through, and um, right now I'm... This has been embarrassing stuff. Okay. No, that's okay. <laughs> I'm reading this one called The Sacred Search. Okay. Who's it's, it by? Uh, by Gary Thomas. Okay. Uh, it's right here. What if, it, what if it's not about who you marry, but why? Hey. So it's a book on finding the one, and, yeah. and th thinking about, like, what you're looking for in a spouse, and especially, right. like, as a Christian person. So I'm, like, on the second chapter. Yeah. Uh, but it's got these cool questions in the back, um, you know, that make you kind of reflect on, like, what you're looking for. So this one says, like, the after the first 
uh, chapter, it says, like, describe a marriage you respect and what is it about that couple that makes you admire their relationship? Mm -hmm. You know, 10 years after you're married, how do you hope someone will describe your marriage relationship? Write out the ideal description of the relationship uh, you hope to have. Describe some of the marriages you've seen that you definitely do not want to model your own marriage. So it's wow. just a bunch of, yeah, it's, it's just a bunch of critical thinking yeah. questions. It's just like, okay. Yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah, so I was reading that. And, you know, the first, the first chapter was good because, like, it, it, it kind of puts it into perspective. Like, you want to have that marriage, like, 10 years later. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's called, I think the first chapter is called The Two Tears. Right. So there's two different tears. You're either going to have those, like, I'm miserable crying tears in your marriage you're gonna have those like super joyful yeah i'm glad i made this decision tears right. yeah uh and that happens in in the world like that just happens yes. like you're gonna have one or the other and just mm -hmm. like what kind do you want it's like well obviously the joyful one right so how do i get there uh you know and that's what that book is kind of helping me realize right um but yeah so what do you what's your experience in that jeff <laughs> <How do> you <laughs> well let me say uh off the bat that i married my first girlfriend um <laughs> which is pretty uh, what i think is really cool yeah well honestly. like i say sherry was my first girlfriend but it wasn't from a lack of trying uh it just that's the way it worked out um but the thing about dating and stuff and it's funny because you know sherry and i've kind of just talked about it and you know just it's like, could you imagine trying to date in 2021 America? And she's like, no, that doesn't sound fun <laughs> at all. <laughs> you know, it, it, it just really doesn't. There's so much, so much junk and drama in the world right now. Yeah. So God bless you. Uh, <laughs> but some things that I, that I have learned, not just from myself, but from uh, Sherry and I used to go to marriage seminars. Uh, and also we've, we've read books, uh, you know, on marriage and stuff like that too. Um, you know, one of the important things about dating, and this is like key, and I learned this from a preacher up in Childress, Texas, who him and his wife does a marriage seminar. And it's something that I'm going to say it and everybody's going to say, well, that's totally obvious, but we don't really think about, and that is this, you marry who you date. You marry who you date. So if you date junk, you're going to marry junk. Hmm. But if you if you date uh, well, you're going to marry well. Hmm. So you always got to you always got to be thinking about you know who are the type of people that I'm dating. Who are the type of people that I'm trying to have a relationship with? Mm -hmm. Because you know whoever it is that you surround yourself with, and whoever it is that you have in your so-called dating pool or however you want to call it, what, what you typically try to go for, that's who you're going to end up with. And, you know, somebody might be in an exciting worldly date for a season, you mm -hmm. know, but does that mean you want to spend the next uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, yeah. 50 years with them? Yeah. You know, and that's, you know, again, you know, in looking at dating, and again, this is something that goes contrary to, uh, modern America, modern thinking, is that when you think of dating, you do need to think of the long term. Yeah. You know, because uh, you look at how relationship is in the Bible, you look at how sex is in the Bible, and and all that, um, you know, sex, I do believe sex is for marriage. That's, you know, again, I, I let you borrow a book that's called Celebration of Discipline mm -hmm. by Richard Foster. And he has a great statement about sex in that book, which says sex is like a river, and a river, a river is good as long as it stays inside of its banks. But if it comes a flood, it can cause disaster. Hmm. And and so you know that's how come you know sex is a gift from God. Sex is supposed to be enjoyed uh, between a husband and wife in the confines of marriage, because to take it out of that context and to just turn it into a toy like society has done for the past few generations makes it a very dangerous thing. And we see the the consequences of that in the world around us. Mm -hmm. Um so so again, you know, you gotta remember you you marry who you date is is one. Mm -hmm. You gotta remember the the dating as a long term goal. Uh, because the idea of well, I'm just going to date, I'm going to play around and you know be the player and and just have all these different dating relationships is like no, that's junk. The purpose of dating is to figure out who you want to be with for your life, 
because again, it's in the, it's in the marriage relationship that you get the intimacy, the the sex, the yeah. and, and all the joys that people are wanting to have now in a dating relationship. It's like no, you're supposed to have that in the marriage relationship. There's gonna yeah. be people listening thinking that I sound like Father Time, but it's like no, just know. just you know, I'll, it's like think about it. I'll tell you, I'm yeah. like fresh from the world, yeah, so to speak. Uh, I did not grow up with like I mean I. Christian, like, right. so to speak. Uh, uh, you know, um, I'm not a virgin, uh, you know, like, I'm like, you know, like how the, the Bible wants us to wait before marriage. Like, I didn't wait, like, as a, as a younger person. Um, right. So I can, I can tell you from that perspective coming from it, like, it does, it does mess up things. Mm -hmm. I don't, I know, I don't like, and I never liked, um, opening myself up a lot to a person right for it to end mm -hmm. and it, it sucks it sucks when it does it's just like wow like time wasted all this emotional like stuff wasted yeah and it's just not right it doesn't feel right it never did mm -hmm. right and well now i can know now i know why yeah and now i know why because it's just it's, it's it's it complicates things it's very clear that it does. Right. It's very clear to me in my life that it always has. Mm -hmm. And and to, you know, like you said, like you sound like Father Time, but some people, and especially me, before, like I wasn't opening my mind to the possibility of, well, hold on, let's let's wait. Mm -hmm. Why do we have to have sex? Right. You know, like can't like there is like there is a better way to enjoy each other's company and you know, like with the world today what tv tells us to do like you know it's it, it confuses us it's, you know and that's the thing you brought up tv and that and that's one of the things that tv either on purpose or accidentally has brought into our world yeah and that is going back to the very beginning of television i, I joked about this last night at the with somebody at the bible class last night that we have at North Mission. And that is, you know, TV has put into our head that all your life's major events can be lived through and solved in half an hour to an hour with TV commercial time involved. You know, yeah. if it's something major, maybe a movie link, so maybe two hours. <laughs> and and that, that they've done that with, you know, sex and relationship and, and marriage yeah. and everything. Because, you know, again, you know, uh, promiscuous sex and, and all this stuff is in, it's in, you know, it would be easier to, or, you know, it'd be a shorter list to bring up shows in which that stuff's not a part of at all yeah. than it is to, to bring up shows well, that, you know, basically sex sells TV. Sex sells so, TV. I'm... Yes. So, the, but the thing is how many shows the consequences to the lifestyles that are on TV? Oh yeah. So, I mean, that's, so, you know, that doesn't help because people get these things. Well, it's like, well, you know, that never, that never happened. You know, when you say, well, I know TV is fake. It's like, come on. We see this, this veneer of falsehood surrounded by us and advertisement, TVs, music. Uh, you know, now we have YouTube and the internet just adding on to that. And, and everybody carries around in their hip pocket on their cell phone. And so it's, you know, we see it and we're bombarded with it and, you know, it seems exciting and it's something that we want to be a part of. But what you never see or rarely see is the consequences to the said action. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like take sex, for example. You know, people think that, that they can just go and, and have sex with as many people as they want to and there will be no consequence. Okay, if you're able to do that, there is something severely mentally wrong with, with that person. Be and that's not a knock. That's not an insult. It's because what's going on in sex, this is how come the Bible describes it in Genesis, you know, and the husband will leave his family and be united to his wife and the two will become one flesh. That That's the description of how sex comes into the picture. It's when the 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 man leaves home with his wife and they're no longer part of mom and dad's household, so to speak. I mean, they go visit and take part in their life, but but mom and dad are not raising their kid anymore. Mm -hmm. And they come away, and through intimacy, these two become one flesh, and in that, they craft a new home. So what's going on in sex? Going on in sex is you're joining spiritually, you're joining psychologically, mm -hmm. as well as the physical. Mm -hmm. So you got all this stuff going on, and and if and if in our head we just view it as just a strictly physical act, we don't understand what it is. Yeah. 
But the sad thing is, is that it still has, you know, very serious ramifications. It can have some ser- very serious consequences. Yeah. And, and again, people go through these consequences and they don't even know why. You know, and, and when relationships break up, they're broken hearted, like torn to pieces. And again, they don't know why. Well, it's because, you know, it, you might have tried to say that this was just nothing much than just frivolous fun. But the truth is, is that you've, you've joined with another person in a very highly intimate level yeah. in which when God designed it, he didn't design it with just, okay, you're just free to walk away from this. Yeah. Because some things you just can't walk away from unhurt. Yeah. And, you know, and, and that's, and that's why it's so, it's so powerful. Yeah. I've, I've definitely seen, um, sex addiction, uh, ruin, uh, a person's life that I care about. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've seen it, I've seen it ruin my life. Mm-hmm. Uh, so like it, it's out there, like it's more common than people think. And like every man goes through it. Like every man, like and I and I want to be more specific towards like um, uh, it, like addiction to pornography. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, that's hard. That's like a hard one. It is for, hard for it's, men, especially. There was actually a book written about. It. I hadn't read it, but they. I think it's a book. It's definitely. A, they made a like a show documentary. Mm-hmm. It's called Every Man's Battle, mm-hmm. and that's what it is. Yeah. It's about every man's battle against pornography, yeah. and because again, you look at the world. Um, you know, it's like I've had, you know, people come to me and say, well, I have a this loved one who's struggling with pornography. What can we do? And and they come with like an anger, which I'm not saying they, they shouldn't be angry or whatever, but, but what I try to get them to understand is look at the world around us. Look at what, uh, this society is putting on our men, mm-hmm. you know, and it's, you know, again, yeah. pornography is literally everywhere. It's in every movie. It's in every song. It's in you know it's getting to the point where it's yeah. in most books, yeah. uh, and and just uh, and you talked about sex sells television. <laughs> well, sex also sells. And it's top, like compare yeah. you know compare a woman's magazine to a men's magazine, compare Home and Garden to Lowrider. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, and just uh, on top of that, it, it's I feel like it's introduced to to kids um, a lot of the time. Like I mean. Like, I'm not gonna put any numbers out there, but I was introduced to all that stuff when I was pretty young. Yeah. Um, you know, I had a a friend of mine uh, who was also a Christian convert. You know, we talked about sex and stuff like that, and he turned around and he and he said, "Man, I am really sorry uh, for the pressure I put on you guys because he's he was older. Right. So the pressure I put on you and, and all on all you guys about being virgins, about having sex, because it was wrong. Yeah." You know, I, I, I messed us up. It really messed us all up. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I mean, now, like, you know, I forgave him. I was like, it's okay. Oh, cool. yeah. You know, we're, yeah. we're, we're Christians now. It's different. Like, yeah. we understand that. Right. Um, but people, I mean, and, and even, like, like, friends that I've had are still in that world, but are still in that, like, sex-first world, sex-driven world, right. where those are, it's like their primary need. Yeah. You know, it's just like, well, man, like, I don't know. One day your body's not gonna be able to have sex. So what? Are you, like, yeah. You know, how are you gonna how are you gonna deal with that? But like, it's just it, it's like it's the world, and and it's messed. It's it's traumatized. Like I, I would say traumatized, but it's just like brainwashed us from a very young age uh, to think this is normal. Well, you know, it's it's interesting to to remember the devil cannot create, right? Hmm. So you look at like sin for example and sinful what we would call sinful behavior you know the devil cannot create you know the devil cannot create love you know Mm -hmm. in fact love's not of the devil at all god is love and so you look at what sinful behavior is sinful behavior is the uh, devil taking normal good wholesome behavior and twisting it into something bad you know, for example, you know, because, you know, there have been times in, in world history in which uh, sex was seen as like a necessary evil just for the sake of having kids. And it's like, well, no, that's not accurate either. Mm-hmm. You know, sex was created by God to be enjoyed. Um, but the thing is, is that the devil took that and converted it and took it out of the self-control and yeah. just flooded it everywhere yeah. 
And men, you know, most guys are hardwired visual people. And, you know, and then, you know, throw that into the mix and, and there you are. But uh, it's, it wasn't supposed to be that way. It's just that that's what the devil made it through just over broadcasting it, you know, mm -hmm. taking something that was created by God and, and distorting it and make and turning it into something bad, which has wrecked, you know, not just wrecked marriages, but it's wrecked relationships. It's wrecked people. Um, because, you know, you, you see people, you know, again, even people who were subject to that industry or human trafficked, whatever you want to say, yeah. you know, it ruins them. It, yeah. it absolutely ruins them. I mean, you know, it's such a, you know, all this type of behavior, it, it, you know, sinful behavior, regardless of how big or little we think a sinful behavior is, uh, it damages us on yeah. some level. You know, you just don't get to, to walk away from sin untouched. It, it hurts yeah. uh, us some way. Sometimes it might wreck us to think that we have no value, or sometimes it can make us hard-hearted where we just feel nothing. Yeah. And that's not good either. We, we might call it strength, but really it's just being callous to the world and you feel nothing. Yeah. You know, you might as well be a robot. And, and that, again, that, that's not yeah. good either. No. So, yeah, I mean, so that's, yeah, that, that's the hard thing about it. And that's, and that's the world we live in. And, and again, uh, regardless of what age of the world we have, we, and we can sit back and think, well, I just wish, I just wish this stuff wasn't here. Well, yeah. And I also wish that, you know, I, I could fly so I didn't have to worry <laughs> about my cars breaking down on me, but that's not, that's not going to happen. Yeah. So what do we do? And, and, and what we do is, is that we live an on-purpose life. Yeah. Paul will tell the churches that uh, you're going to have to fight for your relationship with God. And it's true. And we also have to fight for our marriages. Hmm. You know, we have to fight for our relationships with our kids. We have to fight mm -hmm. for our relationship with the church. Mm -hmm. Though, because one of the ways in which sin comes into people's lives is because we just quit fighting. And we just say, well, you know, in, 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 in this case, I, you know, I'm a sex addict. And so this is what I am. This is what I'm going to be. And yeah. what's the point of fighting it? There's no point. So this is what I'm going to do. And to blaze is with the consequences. Mm. And, you know, and that's how people go into that downward spiral. Do we see our human relationships and our relationship with God as something worth fighting for? Yeah. I, I mean... I would hope that everyone does, but you know, um, I think most of my relationships definitely. And now that, you know, I find myself in the world having, I don't want to say justify, but people don't understand. People don't understand why I spend so much time at church. Right. And they're like, well, don't let church get in the way of what you want to do. I'm like, well, I'm not gonna i'm not gonna let what do you mean like what like i'm not gonna let the world get in the way of me wanting to go to church uh like that's just what it is and like people so like i said like people like on the outside looking and don't understand that if you've never seen my friend arnold um you know and again i i know <laughs> arnold is, our, my friend arnold is 30 years old but he has like two at least two foot long dreadlocks and two feet already Yes, and and he's a <laughs> he's a musician, and and he's an artistic world, and and he's trying to produce various things, and and just you know, and and very much in that artistic scene, and so yeah, obviously you, you know, obviously you're not a churchgoer, <laughs> you have tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 and so you know, so when when you tell people that. You want you do want to go. Yeah, that gives them pause. Yeah, you know I, I think I've shared this story before, but it's like you know I think I'm getting a little old now because people don't ask me anymore. But when I first became a full time preacher, I was 24. Mm -hmm. You know, and so the first question I would get is, okay, you do you're a preacher? I say, yeah. Why? <laughs> it was like, why? You know, that that was the gut response. Why? Why would you do that? You know, you're 24. You have life to live. Why? Why would you do that? And it's like that's the thinking of the world. Yeah. Pursuing Christ as an old man, as an old person pursuit, not for a young, virile mm. specimen as yourself. But can you imagine having God as a young, virile person as such as myself? <laughs> you know, like 
why why would it be an older person's pursuit? Why shouldn't we be getting ready to die sooner, so to speak? Because in American culture, death is for old people. Uh, death know, is for everybody. Ah, it is. But we don't like thinking about that. Yeah. You know, we don't like thinking about that. And, and unfortunately, the side effect is is that, you know, if someone does die young and the family comes to me and they start, you know, saying, well, we tried to raise them the best we could or, or we're doing this or he was about to get his life, you know, like looking for me to validate their various choices. And it's hard enough to do that when I know the people, but sometimes this is done to me by the complete strangers. Hmm. And it's like, what you know, what do you want me to say? And the thing about it is, is that death comes for us all hmm. and we have no idea when it's going to come. We really don't. Yeah. And and so the question is, how do we spend our life now? Yeah. Yeah. Like I'll say, granted, I don't like I'm not ready to die tomorrow. I'm not ready to die <laughs> as soon as I walk out the door. But like, you know, there is a comfort now. Yeah. There's more of a comfort as I as I seek the the kingdom of, of God, as I seek heaven, as I look for that, and especially for having that on earth. Right. Um, it just like, you know, I, and I hear the stories about, you know, these amazing Christian missionaries who are like, I'm ready to go. Like I've done my job, <laughs> you know, but then I've also seen other Christian missionaries who have done great work who are afraid to go. Yeah. So, you know, it's just like it, just because you do the work doesn't mean you're going to feel ready all the time. And no. it's just like, um, understanding that now, like knowing that my mission it matters but like it's like it's not a you know I'm, I'm not planning churches i'm not you know i'm not baptizing people but you know but i'm still doing my part but are you planting seeds yes okay. and that's the See, point and that's, that's the, the point. point yeah and and not that i should feel cocky enough to be like i'm ready to go you know <laughs> like but like that um i just have that comfort like you know um that healthy fear of God, that 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 wanting to know God more to the point where, like, you know what, like, if it is His will that He takes me tomorrow, I would I would look forward to seeing Him because He's already helped me. Right. He's already helped me so much. So um, now, like that, I think, like you know, looking at it, like death is that adventure. It's that new step. Mm -hmm. It's not the end. Well, bring us back to, to relationship and dating now. So the goal is, you know, for you and also people who are in your sim similar situation, uh, the goal is to find somebody who will make you better. Yeah. You know, one of my favorite movie series is the Rocky series, you yeah. know, Sherry, and which yeah. is unfortunate because my Adrian. wife doesn't like it. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but Rocky and Adrian are without a doubt my favorite movie couple. And... Uh, and it goes back to the first movie because if you know the Rocky series, you know Adrian's brother Polly treats her like dirt, yeah. and so Polly's talking to Rocky, and and he asks, you know, what do you, what do you see in my sister? You know, she, you know, what do you see in her? Because he doesn't, you know, Polly doesn't value her at all, mm -hmm. and Rocky just says, hey, we fill gaps. I have gaps. She has gaps. We fill gaps. You know, and that's the thing is like together they they fill up what the other person is missing. Yeah. Can you find, or hopefully what you're looking for is someone who will make you better. Yeah. Uh, someone, I, can, I didn't create this, but someone else once said is you pursue God and you marry the person who can keep up with, with that, with your pursuit with God. Yeah. You know, and, um, and, and that's what it, you know, that's again, the yeah. secret who is going to make your walk with the Lord stronger. Now, again, a uh, complaint that I get, these days, and I'm not going to say it's not without validation. When well, people say, "Well, there, you know, there's nobody out there my age that are pursuing God," and, you know, it's 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 like the the girls who go clubbing and they're like, "We're trying to find a good guy." It's like, okay, where are you looking? Yeah, yeah, okay, you got to be careful where you're looking. All right. <laughs> you know, yeah. No, no kidding. You know, no kidding. Uh, my my friends want me to like look in the world. And I'm like, uh, dude, like that's kind of complicated for me. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, like, oh, try that girl or oh, that girl's pretty and blah blah blah. I'm like, oh, okay, well, like I can go introduce myself. Yeah. But like, what do you expect for me to do right now? Right. Like, you know, like, uh, I'm, you know, uh, what I like. <sighs> this pursuit is very specific. Like, yeah. if you think it's like, yeah, like exactly. Who am I gonna find that's going to understand one my my pursuit? Of, of heaven. Well, you know, and that's the thing is Paul will talk about in 1 Corinthians 7 
about how, you know, the Bible frowns on divorce. And I think most people understand this. And, and, and so, again, the Bible gets racked. But again, talking about what we were talking about with sex earlier, mm-hmm. uh, the whole way that this was created was that it was not made to be destroyed easily. Mm-hmm. You know, even in when people have divorced, a lot of people go through divorce issues personal issues even after they divorced you know they because divorce these days is painted with such oh it's it's easy it's easy yeah. you know just divorce them and start over what the heck and it's like no there's people come out of that come out of that process broken in, in various a, ways it doesn't sound like a fun process at all i know it, it I doesn't think. but you know it's like there's there was a billboard that they used to have i think it was in california but the billboard literally said life is short get a divorce <laughs> And it's, it's, you know, and I think these, you know, I think I saw something like that in Austin or San Antonio mm-hmm. once. I mean, it was, but that's the message. Yeah. It's easy. Just do it. What? You know, try again or don't try whatever. But <laughs> the thing is, is, is marriage, it wasn't designed to be broken easily. And again, yeah. you know, the intimacy of marriage, again, you can't just sever that and walk away. Again, you know, God describes marriage as two people becoming one flesh. Take a person, cut them in half and see how they live. Or survive, you know. I mean, it's 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 not something that's supposed to be easily destroyed. Yeah. So, going back to First Corinthians seven, Paul talks about it's like, look, if you marry somebody who's an unbeliever, and like, he tells them it's like, don't divorce them. It's like you, you're married. Okay. Now, what you can do is you know do the best you can with it. He says, mm-hmm. who knows, wife, if your faithfulness might bring your husband to the Lord, and who knows, husband, if your faithfulness might bring your bring your sp- uh, wife to the Lord. Yeah. And so people say, well, it's like a, a believer can marry an unbeliever. And it's like, yes, a believer can marry an unbeliever, but I will tell you something else. People who do that, they also have very, they have a hard go. It can be a very frustrating experience. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've, I've conducted marriages for people that I just, you know, you just, you just know. Uh, and done premarital. I always try to do premarital counseling for people that I'm, whom I'm about to conduct a, a marriage uh, ceremony with. And you know, sometimes one of them is there, just saying what they need to say in order to get married. Hmm. And then you know, and, and now I, you know, now that I'm a little older than I was when I first started this, now I say it's like, look, if you want this stuff to work, if you want it to mean anything, you got to be honest. And because you can say whatever you think I want to hear. But in the end, I'm not the one that's responsible for your marriage. You know, you're going to get married and now you're going to have to deal with it. And, you know, and you have the right to walk away anytime you want to until you say, I do. Yeah. You know, I call it the Princess Bride rule because that, that's you know one of the one of the key points of it. You still haven't seen that movie, have you? No. Youngin, jeez. <laughs> um, I can't. That's inconceivable. Jeff also, Jeff also shows me old movies. Yes, that's inconceivable. <laughs> which, if you uh, saw the movie, you would get that joke. But anyway, um, yeah. But that there's a character Wesley in the movie that he's talking to Buttercup, and which you know, and and she just thought she married the evil Prince Humperdinck, and so she's about to commit suicide. And and he says, "You didn't marry her, or you didn't marry him." And she says, "What do you mean? Yeah, there was this old man. He said, man and wife.' And he said, "Did you say I do?" And she said, no, we skipped over that part. And I was like, well, you didn't say it. You didn't do it. And that's the thing, you know, and, and mm-hmm. I believe that. It's like, that's why that's such an important part of the marriage ceremony, the saying of I do. Yeah. Because when you say I do, that's you giving your word to the covenant of marriage. Yeah. And it cannot go forward without you saying it. Yeah. And so you have the right to walk away from your fiance anytime before you say I do mm. with no strings attached. But once you say I do, it's a completely different ballgame yeah. because now you've signed your name to the covenant. Yeah. And uh, so and many movies are based off of that concept. <laughs> <laughs> so those rom coms. Yeah. No, don't do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. But that's, but there's a lot of truth to that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so again, are you going to, you know, so you marry who you date. Be careful where you're looking for mm-hmm. uh, someone to date. Yeah. You know, you can't go. You can't go to various at, uh, parts of our society thinking you're going to find a wholesome spouse. Um, also, you're going to have to, you know, or, you know, marry somebody who's going to make you better and closer mm-hmm. to the Lord. Yeah. Uh, which, by the way, guys, if you're listening, I've done premarital counseling numerous times, and in the first session in which we do this, I always say bring a list of at least ten. Try to get to twenty, but at least ten 
expectations that you have of marriage. And without miss, every single time at the top of the list, somewhere I would say in the top five, um, maybe even top three, I mean, it's up there for women is they're looking for a spiritual leader Hmm. every time. You know, I mean, that, and, and, you know, and again, that's something which guys these days, they want to give a miss on. But it's like, that's what women are looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so, uh, again, something that we can put in our collective mindset. So that, that, that's what it is. You know, find something, you know, you marry who you date. Be careful uh, where you look. Find somebody who will make you better. Find somebody who will chase after you as you're chasing after God. Yeah. Um, and again, you know, after you are married, you know, you, you, you fight for your marriage. You, you keep, and this might be something else for another show, but maybe after you're married. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it's like, how do you keep that? Because this is another issue. How do you yeah. keep the romance of oh, you mar- know what? and intimacy of marriage we'll, going? We'll invite be- some friends. Do what? We'll invite some friends onto our show. Oh, there you go. There we go. We can invite some experts. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> because that's the thing. Because, you know, because again, you know, for some people, they get married and then they quit. Yeah. Well, it's like, well, that's not good either. And yeah. so... You know, I, I tell people that um, I tell people that it's interesting that God created marriage, because I honestly believe there there's two relationships that we have in the world that are supposed to illustrate the relationship that we're supposed to have with God. One is the parent-child relationship, and the other is marriage. Hmm. You know, the intimacy of marriage, because the intimacy that we're supposed to have in marriage that's the intimacy that God wants to have with us. Yeah. And so he gave us marriage in order to say, you see this? You see a marriage done right? That's what I want to have with you. And so also mm-hmm. you look at Satan. Why does he spend so much time battling family and marriage? Mm-hmm. Because if we don't understand those relationships, we have a hard time understanding the relationship God wants to have with us. Yeah. So, um, so again, this is, this is a deep topic. Yeah. As far as I, I tell you what, a good way to end. As far as relationship books go, you know, you talked about what? What's the name of that book again? This one is called "The Sacred Search" by okay. Gary Thomas. Right. Okay. Now I'm gonna, like I said, I never know what we're gonna talk about when we uh, get together. But uh, just to throw out some others um, that you can look for, you can look for a book called "His Needs, Her Needs" by Dr. Harley. That's been around for 25, 30 years. It's been around I've for a while. I've heard about that one. Yes, it's basically Dr. Harley is a uh, marriage counselor, professional marriage counselor, and like again, 25, 30 years ago, whatever it was, uh, he basically made a database of all his cases, clients, mm. and and basically was able to figure out the top ten needs of men, the top ten needs of women. And that's what he centered the book around, you know. Mm-hmm. And and just to give you a little heads up, you know, what the, what do you think is the number one need of men in marriage? Did we talk about this? I we could have. I don't know. <sighs> Not on the podcast. I f- was it sex? Yes, it was yeah. sex. Okay. okay, sex. Okay, who's surprised? Um, now right. here we go. <laughs> number one need of women was the spirit. Well, it was con- communication. 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 Yes. So you know. So the point being made is like. You know, guys say that women don't understand and women say guys don't understand. It's like, you know, this is one of the points of that book. Sex in a marriage is as important to a man as communication in marriage is important to his wife. Right. And it's like, wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, it's it's one of those, okay. Uh, you know, because a lot of guys don't communicate well. You know, so uh, that's something that we need to, to strive with, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, for, for men, intimacy happens in the bedroom, so to speak. For women, intimacy happens throughout the rest yeah. of the entire day with yeah. just the, the little ways that you communicate. So, again, yeah. His Needs, Her Needs is a good one. Another good one is a book called Sheet Music, S-H-E-E-T. I don't want anybody to think I'm cussing. Sheet Music. music. Yes, it's it's a book on intimacy. It's music. Just it's about <laughs> uh, never mind <laughs> uh, it's it's again it's a book about intimacy um, mm-hmm. and, you know again also the Bible you know uh, obviously the Bible people don't view the book the Bible as a relationship book but the truth is is that we have an entire book of the Bible that is dedicated to sexual intimacy it's called the Song of Solomon and mm-hmm. uh, you know because again people think that you know sex isn't for Christians or that if I'm a follower of God I'm some sort of prude and the truth is, is like, no, the Bible speaks, again, a lot about 
intimacy and sexual relationship and again what that relationship is supposed to be like and and how God loves us and how we're supposed to love our spouses and, yeah. and just the correlation amongst all that. And again, it's it's very uh very, very deep uh about that. As far as other podcasts and stuff go, if you are a Facebook user, I would suggest that you look up uh the Stronger Marriage Seminar by Trey and Lee Morgan. They're the couple that I talked about earlier up in Childress, Texas. They they travel around the country doing stronger marriage workshops. Very good stuff. Learned a lot from them, and, and they they do a podcast. They've written a book together, and they have a lot of articles and stuff like that. So if you're a social media user, particularly Facebook, look up the Stronger Marriage Seminar uh, with Trey and Lee Morgan. And uh, I'm trying to think of anything else that I can throw in there with that. Anything else that you might suggest? Okay. <laughs> I mean, you can't see my face right now but like i'm making this scrunched up like do i know anything well not but... that you know anything but anything that i might you might suggest that i throw out as far as mm -hmm. tools resources and, and things like that right, you can call jeff and also just you know again <laughs> something else and again this is more along the lines of after you're married um i don't and i and i share this with people who are looking to get married as like look be 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 aware of the type of married couples you hang around. Like if you're mm -hmm. a newly married person, you don't want to pal around with a bunch of people whose marriages are on the rocks. You want to mm -hmm. befriend and, and come as close contact as you can with people with good, healthy, strong marriages. Because, you know, there's this psychological thing. It's like if you want to be a good businessman, you hang around successful businessmen. Yeah. If you want to get in shape, you know, if you, if you have six bodybuilder friends, you'll be the seventh. Mm. You know, if you have six friends who are in jujitsu, you're going to be uh, in jujitsu, you know, and, <laughs> uh, you know, and this, you know, put, the, put, you know, if you want to be successful in anything, you got to surround yourself with people who are in that vein. So if you yeah. want to have a good, successful marriage, you need to surround yourself with good, successful marriages. And so, again, that's just, you know, one more. So, um, so yeah, um, follow us. Uh, you know, with that, you know, just say our tags. Okay. You know, follow uh, us you on can, the Facebook. You can follow us defense. on Facebook. I'm under Jeff LaPlace. Uh, you can also hunt up Spiritual Defense. Uh, that's the official uh, Facebook page. You can find this podcast on the Spiritual Defense Facebook page as well as SoundCloud. Look up Spiritual Defense on SoundCloud. And also, uh, you know, Arnold is always my co-pilot on this. And uh, no, he's you also can on Facebook. Me. You can friend me. You can look me up, Arnold Martinez. Uh, I was going to say also um, look up Church of Christ on Facebook. The North, North Mission, Mission Church of Christ. Church of Christ. Uh, not on, don't do the Facebook one. So uh, follow us on YouTube. The mm, North Mission, that's right. The North Mission Church of Christ has a YouTube page that has like all of our, our worships and, and sermons and, and stuff like that on there. So, yeah. Uh, so, all right. With that, thank you for joining joining us again. To everyone out there, um, goodbye and God bless you all. God bless. Grace and peace.